Live from San Francisco, it's The Q. Covering Informatica World 2017. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back, everyone. We're live in San Francisco for CUBE's exclusive coverage of Informatica World 2017. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. Our next guest is Neil Chakravarthy, who's the CEO of Informatica, CUBE alumni multiple times, but the chief executive officer leading the, the charge of a great private company doing very well. Welcome back to theCUBE. It's great to be here, John. Now we've Thanks got a couple things to talk about, but I want to just jump in. Behind us, you see the new logo, uh, Informatica. Really kind of the last leg of the stool, if you will, you guys have gone private, great yep. product work over the years. You know I'm pretty been complimentary of you guys, although uh, uh, we've had a critical analysis session yesterday, but all the big bets yep. were very well done, playing off, you got a great product team, great leadership team, uh, new CIO hire, but the last leg of the stool is the brand. You guys That's haven't right. been showboating much. You just, now you got to kind of brag and be humble yeah. about it and get the word out. New, new marketing <laughs> program, what's that all about? Yeah, that's exactly right. So you, you said, the transformation that we are going through, three big, three big steps of the transformation, the product portfolio transformation, we've been talking about that. This is all driven by cloud, by big data, and machine learning and all of that. Then the transformation of the business model. So from license to subscription and cloud services, and now the, the brand transformation, and we see the brand transformation as actually catching up to where the company actually was. You know, we were just talking about that right before we got started. Yeah. Uh, we actually have done a lot of things, like for instance, did you know that we are doing a one trillion transactions a month in the cloud? I mean, very few people knew about that. Yeah, what's more impressive on that, I found that out earlier, it was one billion in January. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's I mean how do you do that? It's, it's, like, it's, it's a, a growth hockey stick. It's, it's, it's a hockey up. stick, it's huge. It's huge growth, and that's driven by the fact that we are the leader in cloud data management for the biggest ecosystems, for Salesforce, for Amazon, for Azure, and that drives a lot of uh, the data volume across the cloud. Before we get in the keynotes, on that note, and one of the big bets you know I've been impressed on is the cloud play, right? Yep. And, well, the data architecture, I think, is a winning formula. Um, but you got cloud presence, you had Amazon Web Services. Yep. Okay, Google just announced Spanner, horizontally scalable database, that's right, that's generally right. available. You were one of the three data partners on the front end of that. That's correct. And part of the launch of That's Google. Correct. Yeah. I didn't know that. So you know, the, the way we think of the world is, from our customer's perspective, it really is, the best way to think about it is as the enterprise cloud. Put it together. All the data you have in the enterprise that you have generated over the years, that's still very valuable data, and then the data you have in the cloud. And you can't think of those two things as separate. For instance, you could have customer data, the same customer. John, you're a customer of a retailer, some of that data about you is in their on-premise systems, and some of the data yeah. might be in a cloud system, but it is all interconnected data, and you can't have two separate silos, and we believe that we are the only ones yeah. that can really manage that, and that's why we are supporting every major cloud platform and cloud system, just like we are supporting every major on-premise system. You guys call Switzerland, it's a great way to describe it, but really to me, what's bigger than that is that you guys make data ready. Mm -hmm. And that's really the value of what I call this tier two data layer that's building where you got stuff in memory, I get that, there's some obviously streaming stuff and, and things going on there. But now, then you have third tier you know, archive, but data tier two is just like all the data, IOT, mm -hmm. structured data, that's growing, but the cost to store is getting lower and lower. Mm -hmm. So now companies are incented to store. How is that impacting your business? We heard that at Dell EMC World over and over, and obviously they're in the storage business, but the tier two storage is significantly growing. Well, data is still growing at over 25% a year. That's a huge number given already the size that you have. So it's going to be within, by 2020, it'll be going to be over 15 zettabytes. And a zettabyte, for those of you who are interested, is 10 to the 21. That's <laughs> a huge amount of data. And what we are seeing is the value comes from being able to, first of all, see your way through the data, being able to understand what data is valuable and what's not, and then connect the data. If you have customer data, product data, location data, et cetera, being able to put all of that together, that's really where the value so comes So I got to ask you about your keynote. You talked about the digital transformations unfolding and data is the critical foundation for right. digital transformation. Okay, we've heard digital transformation. I mean, I mean, I'm not to say it's played. I know you guys yeah. have your theme, but there's business transformation going on. So yeah. digital transformation is known trend, but it kind of has played in my mind. I want to know what's different about Informatica now. Why is it unfolding now versus when two years ago when we started talking about digital transformation? What's well, the most relevant thing now? Well, I think the biggest uh, relevance is 
two years ago, as you exactly said, people were talking about digital transformation. Now they're doing digital transformation. And you're seeing, you know, we talked about our own customers, like Tesla or GE or Amazon doing it, and lots of other customers are actually doing the digital transformation. Now when you first take the first step towards the digital transformation, that's when you realize, my data, I got to fix the data foundation. If I can't have a, a data foundation, then I just, you know, the, everybody cares about a good customer experience. If I can't tell all the interactions a customer has with my company, and that data is in different places, there is no way I can provide a good customer experience because the customer knows what they're doing with me and I don't know what they're doing with me. And that's yeah. really the foundation for the data foundation. I want you to take a minute to just re-explain that because this is something that comes up all the time. I get different answers and people have different definitions. What does it mean to have a digital data foundation and what are some of the impacts to the customers when they do have that? Well, the, the, think of it the simplest way is let's say you have a customer and a lot of the new customers are like that. You're a bank and you have a customer who doesn't want to talk to anybody. They only want to do everything through a mobile application. They want to file a loan application through the mobile, they want to check their balance through mobile, they want to deposit a check through mobile, et cetera, et cetera. If they have a problem, they might talk to somebody through a chat on a mobile, but they don't really want to talk to a live person. And this is, by the way, a common scenario now. Mm -hmm. Now, they are doing probably 20 different things through the mobile, but when you get into your back end, that's the front end, you can put 20 things on the mobile. But the back end, you got 20 different things. But you have to have a single picture across those 20 things. When did the customer interact with us? What did they do? What's, what is the pattern of that customer? And how do you profile what the customer is doing? And if you don't have that picture, everything that you do with the, with the customer is going to just appear disconnected to them. It's going to frustrate them even more. And that's really the reason we have to have the data foundation. Okay, so. That's kind of a data layer, I get that, and believe me, horizontally scalable data, making it accessible, only helps the apps. That's right. The question to you is, your, your reaction to people saying, hey, Anil, I got to be innovative, I got to free the data up, and I got to let it grow, and you know, a thousand flowers bloom, all this goodness. That's right. But hey, I got to control it, so that's a huge issue. I got governance, I got compliance, there's laws now, so am I stuck in the mud? I want to be innovative and go fast, Yeah. but now I got to govern it, and control it. No, you can How do, do you answer that question? You can do both now, and that's the reason why we're announcing Claire and all these innovations that we announced is the advent of machine learning and metadata lets you do both. You basically say, look, I can use all these new technologies to find out what data I have, and it's not going to slow you down. In fact, if you set up something like an intelligent data lake, because it has the metadata layer, you're actually opening up the data you have to the end user without having to come through IT for every piece of data, which means they can go faster. That's where the innovation happens. So you can so do both. So it's a both. control catalog, basically. It's exactly right. It's a controlled catalog, and you basically get to uh, yeah. define different levels of trust. You can say this data is curated data, it's trusted data, and we can vouch for it. There may be other data that's just shared collaboratively, and you can just flag it. And then that way, the user knows, okay, here's data that I'm getting from a central system, and this is what I need to use when I'm talking about something like revenue. If I'm talking something like a trend of what's going on, I might be able to use other data, and that's the key there. Talk about the, the trend around Claire. We've got a lot of buzz here at the show. Yep. The Claire stands for clairvoyant. It's got the word AI in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a name, you got, <laughs> SAP's got Leonardo, Salesforce is Einstein, yeah. um, all these different terms, but it's a clever way to point to AI, augmented intelligence, and That's machine correct. learning. Correct. What does that mean for Informatica as a company? Certainly it kind of humanizes it. Correct. Um, shows that the access of data should be dem democratized. Correct. What does it mean for you guys and the customers? How does that, how, how does that play out in your mind as the CEO? What do you see Claire doing? Well, the, the three big points I'll make about Claire. First of all, when, when we built Claire, we did not invent the artificial intelligence or the machine learning. A lot of that is already available. Uh, so we took a lot of the best algorithms in machine learning and applied them to metadata and applied them to data management. That's the secret sauce. It's not the building the AI itself, it's the use of the AI for data management. That's number one. Second, we defined a Claire very clearly and we said it's not a product, yeah. it's an engine. It's, a, it's an AI-powered engine. In fact, I call it for Claire, I say, look, it's cloud-scale, AI-powered, real-time engine. That's Claire, <laughs> right? So it's an acronym, but it's, it's the engine that powers other products. The third big thing is we're telling customers, you're going to get the benefit of Claire, but you don't need to deploy Claire. When you buy any of our products that are powered by Claire or any of our solutions that are powered by Claire, 
that will automatically come in there. So it means once you have any product like the, our enterprise information catalog or our secure source or data governance, you're starting to use Claire and then you can use Claire for other uh, use cases as well. What's been the reaction? You know, obviously you get nervous, CEO, you probably got these things out there, you probably wonder what the reaction is. What's your take on the reaction? People are very intrigued. I you know, that was the, they look at Claire and go, what is Claire? What, how, how are you guys using it? I think people are asking us, tell us a little bit more about how AI is being used in the world of data and data management. So it's, uh, it's absolutely the reaction we wanted. So I got to ask you this question. I asked Mark Heard the same question at the Oracle Media Day a few weeks ago. Um, I want to ask you the same question. Everyone's number one at everything now. Mm. <laughs> you guys are number one in six quadrants. Um, Oracle's or number one, the Delians, they're everyone's number one at something. So, so the question really is not so much about being number one. Congratulations, you got some magic quadrant wins that was highlighted in the keynote. But you're, you're, you guys are going through a transformation. You're mm -hmm. telling your customers that they're going through a transformation. Wouldn't it make sense that the transformation scoreboard looks different than the old way? And, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this because not that we have the answer, but you know, there's one answer in customer wins. Mm -hmm. But as this new world transforms and unfolds, what's the scoreboard look like? How, because it's not as clean to say, this is the category, you're starting to see a little blending, as, as you mentioned, how data is evolving. Yeah. What's the new scoreboard look like? Is it the scoreboard for us or for the customers? You guys, the industry, how do I know if you're doing well? Obviously customer wins is yeah. obviously number one. I think, uh, yeah, I think the best way to, um, I'll give you a couple of metrics, financial and non-financial, okay? From a non-financial perspective, as you said, there are a couple of key metrics. One is customers, mm -hmm. how many new customers, how many new customers are, uh, or reference customers do we have? Second one that you want to look at is just mind share. Or when people think about digital transformation, do they think of, hey, Informatica, they have a key role to play in my digital transformation. Just looking at mind share and so on, because that's a good leading indicator. Um, in terms of the non-financial, or the financial metrics for us, uh, obviously, as more customers do what we call enterprise cloud data management, you're going to see our subscription revenue grow dramatically, and you know that's something that when you look at our subscription revenue, you'll see mm -hmm. that impact of the enterprise cloud data management. And you guys made the move to subscription, obviously went private, Bruce Correct. Chisholm talk, and Jerry Held, your board members, talked about this. You can do a lot of things, because it, it impacts the P&L, but the, it's still baking out, it's evolving, you're private, you're not public. Correct. But you want to get it right before you go public. That's correct. How do you feel about the, the progress on that front now? Oh, we're making fabulous progress. We're very pleased with where we are. I, from my perspective, we are ahead of where we wanted to, be, where we thought we would be yeah. by this time. Uh, I think uh, customer buying behavior has converged really nicely with where we are in terms of where we want to go. So I think that's, uh, that's definitely been a big plus. Sally Jenkins, your new CMO, you got to feel good about her coming on oh, board. Oh, she's done a great High job. Impact. She said on theCUBE that you guys are the, uh, the hottest privately held pre-IPO startup. That's right. Um, 20 years in the making, whatever, I mean, I mean it's a, but you guys are private, <laughs> you are. a billion dollar startup. I mean, you're acting like a startup, yeah. which is why, I, you know, we, we like you guys a lot, because you, you guys are like a very hustling, like a startup. Yeah. But now you're growing. That's right. right. And you get and beyond the 200 million, over a billion dollars now. When's the IPO coming? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I can tell you the factors that will be the, the lead to the, the perfect timing for the IPO. When those factors come together, I don't have a crystal ball right now, but <laughs> I can tell you, it's it based both on us and the market. From our perspective, uh, we are making this big shift in the uh, business model. We want to make sure that we can say, hey, look, we now the shift is very clear and it's stable, and we can see where they, where you know, we'll be able to project out our our own um, forecast for the next three yeah. four quarters. So that's one key indicator mm -hmm. for us. The second key indicator that we look at is the total revenue growth of the company and what percent of the rev growth of the re revenue is recurring revenue for us. So we're going to be looking at those two factors, and of course, from the market perspective, we want to make sure that the market wants to yeah. is, is continues to be. You uh, can wait four years till we had a new president, and then I heard all the politics from the Kara Swisher thing was. Uh, Got a lot of people stirred up in the conversation. But in, in all serious now, I mean, you also have private equity, so you have to make the company worth money after they go public. So right, right, right. You got to have some growth left in you, right? I mean, you guys are, Absolutely. you feel good about the? Oh, we, we really do, because you know, we look, that's where these six categories that we talked about make a lot of sense, is you look at data integration, data quality, master data management, these are all uh, categories that are well established, and we know the patterns, and we're seeing very good growth in those categories. Then you look at the new categories, cloud, big data management, data security, those are all coming into their own right now. So that's why when you look at our portfolio, you go, wow, there, there are some that you already have great, well established and going well. Mm -hmm. These other ones, they're, they're well established, but they also have a lot of promise and future growth. Great chatting with you. You're a great, uh, insightful and, and inspiration. You guys done a great job. Um, but I got to ask you this, the question because I think you you have an interesting role. I mean, you have you're acting like a startup, but mm -hmm. you're not a startup. You went private from a public company. 
Um, you got a great board of directors. You got Jerry it, Held and Bruce Chisholm on there. But you also got private equity sharks on the well, board. Well, so, I would. <laughs> so, I could, so that's my definition. I won't say you said that. But no, no. I mean, but I'll say actually in the private equity world, my, the, to my pleasant surprise, I've seen the whole spectrum of investors and our guys on the board are very much growth oriented. They they know that the value gets created for them through growth, and so it's well aligned. Yeah, but you're not sitting back having pizza and drinking wine. These, these guys, these PE guys, they're financially driven. That's so right. So the question is, advice to other startups, whether they're venture backed or other companies going through an innovation strategy, how do you manage the success of having such good product excellence? Yeah. I know you got good people, so that's an easy one to answer. How as a CEO do you maintain the discipline to have the cadence of the financial performance? Correct. Because those guys, look, they, they're probably not going to give you, hey, how are we doing, the numbers yeah. matter, but you, you, you're transforming technology and products. That's right, so what What's, we do is- How do you do it? We, you know, we have a scorecard which has both the short term and the long term metrics. So, and we look at both of those. You know, we do a, we do monthly business reviews. So we the the pulse of the company has definitely quickened. We are operating at a new level of intensity. But when we look at the scorecard, it's not just the immediate financial metrics. It's things like, for example, are we building the back end infrastructure to be a subscription company? That's not get doesn't get done in a month. That's a that's, that's a, an IT challenge, right? That's an IT challenge. It's a process challenge. It takes yeah. 12 months, 18 months. The kind of things that you talk with Graham about. But that is an example of. You can have a scorecard, you don't necessarily have to look at a scorecard just for the short term metrics. You look at it for both short term and what makes you successful over the long term. And that's, you know, that's what we, we're doing is just yeah. keep our eye on the ball, focus on a few things, both short term and long term, and make sure we're doing them well. How about customer wins? To me, that's the scoreboard ultimately that's we look at yeah. at our team. How are you doing on customer wins? Can you share some? Obviously, you got a lot of great customers. I met a few last night. Yeah, I yeah. Big, big wigs, um, big names. Yeah, exactly. What do some of the customer wins look like and why are you winning? Well, you know, we have 7,000 plus customers. We have a great customer base. Uh, just at this show, we've had 85% uh, of our sessions here at this show have had customer or partner speakers that gives you a sense of customers want to talk about us. A couple of ones that I would highlight, for example, which are fairly recent, for example, Amazon is one that they just spoke at the show, and they, in fact, the CMO of Amazon was here, uh, Ariel Kelman, and he spoke about how he is a customer uh, of Informatica and how he's using Informatica for his own marketing systems and the marketing data yeah. analytics that he's doing. Another example is Tesla. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about we talk to them about, that, about them at the show. I got a test drive on Friday with one. There you go, exactly. <laughs> and then for the they are using us for the Tesla and the Solar City uh, um, acquisition and and, and driving uh, synergies there. So lots of great examples. Tough of customers, customers, by the way. Oh, these are they are very very, very finicky. Very demanding customers, and we are really proud to be serving them. Okay, final question, Neil. What's next? How do you look forward? Obviously this event, congratulations on getting the branding out. Yeah. Uh, Peggy and the team did a great job. And Sally and the team did a great job. Um, what about um, next? What's yeah. next? Yeah, so you know, what's next for us is simply work with customers to first of all get our story out, understand their priorities, and make sure that they understand that we can be a great partner for them. So we believe that this is the beginning of that journey. We, we talked about digital transformation and how we help them. Now we take the show on the road to our customers, make sure that we help them at their pace to transform. So bring, them, bring the message out, build the brand. Absolutely. That's a key priority. And then continue. Product side, what's, what's going on on the product? Well on the product side, for instance, you saw a teaser of all the big trends. Machine learning, cloud, big data, security, all of these have full-fledged roadmaps that we're going to be working on over the course of the next uh, six months. Anil, great to see you. Congratulations on your continuity. You're still intense. You got the intensity. It's not going to stop, by no, the way. No, it's not. It's only going to get no. more intense as you guys grow, and congratulations. Thank you for having me on your show. We are here live in San Francisco for Informatica World 2017 with the CEO here, Anil Chakravarthy, inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. Stay with us for more coverage from Informatica World after this short break.